Alrighty, so now, oops, nah, we're <laughs> welcome to part three actually of this uh, little guy that I'm doing. So we are now in the Valley of Development. We're basically gonna go through all of the levels right now, or all these this world right now. This is pretty much gonna be a Valley of Development video. So we're gonna show you just yeah how to get through here. Um, so because I get the region ring, we don't actually need this right here, but this in the back is a Rory Lotus. Or Noble's Lotus, I forgot what it's called in this one. Poison healing item. So if, if you don't pick up the regen ring for whatever reason, I would recommend that. But I personally use regen rings for two reasons. It's pretty handy and on the way, so I think it's worth it more over this. Especially because once you load into a level, you can't pick this up for like a second or two. So that's definitely a little slower in that sense. But yeah, um, let's go through this area now. So as you can see, I'm still topless right now. <laughs> but... It's the main reason because is I personally actually do clever at set ring setup for the next boss. So I usually take a running counter hit from this guy. And then I go down here to do the the Prey of Chasm skip, which I do have a video on, so Oh, by the way, I do have an old monk for the last Um So I do have a video on this. So I basically now do the Prey of Chasm drop skip, and I do have a video on this, so if you want to learn how to do it, then you can see that skip video. But what I do generally here is kind of go, I stand here, and then walk like this, and then just be ready to hear my scream. And if you can see in the background, you can see that my character did slide a little bit, and that should pretty much get me at the bottom. So, fairly simple, it's just about the angle really. So, if you need to see the video for more thorough explanation of the little angle, it should be towards the end. I do have timestamps, because there's a couple ways to get through here that I showed. But yeah, so basically you do want to bu uh, bump against the wall to get yourself in a good angle to slide down. Because basically what happens here is that that slope right there will delay your death enough to where you can actually, like, quit out. And you'll be alive at the bottom, but you also have registered a new stable position. On um, the other, you kind of warp down there. Alright, so now I'm this side. You probably know this way to go, I guess, or maybe, or maybe not actually, but basically this little shortcut, I guess. What the heck? I don't hear sounds in the photo, that scared me a little bit. Um, yeah, so this little plank is a shortcut, and then you go through the fog gate. I'm sure from here you know where to go, because this is where the, the filthy woman is. That's where the rats are. So yeah, now you just go here for the rest of the level. It's mostly the same, but you do have a few things to do, so I usually put on cloak here. And then get past this big boy, and then take one more hit from this guy, just a normal one. Hopefully a fire attack. Uh, to set up my clever rats ring. And clothes can be helpful right now for a couple of reasons, but first you need to push this thing out of the way. You just roll into it. Uh, usually twice should do it, but maybe three times. And then for these guys, I like to kind of go further a little bit. And while I'm cloaked, they actually won't see me, so I'll usually go a little further and then just kind of aim for the bottom one, but a little further, so I hit the second one too. And I did unfortunately hit the third one too, like the big one in the back, so he might aggro to me. But if he does, I can just kind of hit him a little bit with Clever Rat. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, we are now in the Fog Gate. As you can see, that's not too bad. What, what I would recommend, if you don't want to do this boss in Clever Rat, or, or this run-up at least, I would say in Clever Rat. Like, the boss itself should be fairly easy, as you'll see soon, but... If you don't want to do the run-up to us in Clever Rat and just fight the boss normally, because you'll, you'll still shred the boss to shreds, basically. You can actually put on the regen ring instead of Clever Rat. And I would recommend doing it as you wait for Freak to die as you get his ring. Because you do need to wait a moment for him to die, so you put you can put this on instead of Clever Rat. And, yeah. But for me, I just that and put on clever but or sharpness right uh these are a couple more heals backup heals so if you like some it's pretty nice um but yeah so basically i usually keep on cloak from way back then and get to the fog like this skip the cutscene obviously and then i drop down here you do take a little bit of damage but she shouldn't be much and then you do homing soul arrow soul ray and then one more soul ray and you should melt it pretty quick so this is why I'm saying that the boss itself is not bad, but maybe having Clever Rat set up while you go through a level is a little more dangerous rather than the boss itself. Um, the strategy, if you don't want to do um, Clever Rat, 
is instead to do homing soul arrow, soul ray, another homing soul arrow, uh, soul ray. That should do the pretty much the same thing, which does take a little bit longer. But because the setup for Cleverite is pretty quick, it should be not too bad. You know? Uh, but yeah, uh, that's how you do that fight. It should be a cake no matter what. Cleverite or not. Um, anything else? I mean, I would, I would recommend maybe not touching the water if you are in Cleverite, because if the boss is alive and you just fall here, you'll get leeches on you. That'll still drain your HP for a little bit. And you do want to touch his Archstone and... Um, Reload the area to get your stuff back, your HP and mana back, but... Um... It, like, if you just found the leeches, it might be too late, so just be careful, like, here, let me just show what I do, generally. Since I still haven't exactly done it either way. How do I go back up? Oh, am I doing it? Am I just going in circles? I feel like I'm going in circles. I'm going in circles, great. How do I go back up? Oh, here it is. Been a minute since I have to go around. <laughs> um, okay, so usually what I do, so I'm right here, I believe. Then once I do the last story, I usually put my clothes back on and then go over here to this rock where the arch was put in and then put in the regen ring back on because you will need it for the next segment, like I was saying, for the swamp. And then I touch the arch because I need the souls for actual souls for leveling later because you're leveling one more time. And then go here, and then start running this way. So yeah, just normally, just go here as you normally do. You will need like a like a stamina bar and a half, or actually I think two is roughly what we need. Yeah, to get through here. Now I did actually make a video on this. As as the time I'm recording this, that's not published, but it should be publishing soon. Uh, as you know, you usually go that way, but you're actually going to go down here. And it's a very simple thing, so. If you do want a slightly longer explanation, but not even that much longer, you basically want to land on this little edge of the cliff here, and then drop down to that cliff, and then go forth from here. Because you're going to need the cat ring, which is defended by the uh, black phantom of this level. But usually what I do is I try to drop down and then turn back around. Oh shit. Okay, so I messed it up. Oh. My bad. That can happen sometimes I'm being uh, a little careful. But yeah, so you basically just want to like land on that and then you should be able to land the other uh, cliff without dying. Uh. Oh, it's because I pressed pa oh, fuck. Okay, I mean, I guess it's not a big deal, but it's annoying. <laughs> All right, give me a moment. Yeah, I think if you press pause, your um, your game does kind of register a a death, and it will save it. Ah, uh, so annoying. Not even intended, but well. All right, well, I, I guess I'm glad that we don't actually do pure white tendency stuff. Like, if you do raise your tendency at all, you already did by reloading here. But you are gonna. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's fine, I guess. It's it's not a worse death. I just didn't expect to die there at all. <laughs> I can't, I'm not, not gonna lie, that's the first time I've died there in many months, I believe. But thankfully I have been showing some backup stones. I normally would re I would use these at the bottom of the swamp, but I do want to show you how much HP you're going to have after the skip, so. Alright, so again, just kind of uh, slip down here and then just try to walk. Keep walking this way. And then just don't roll, don't run. Just flick your stick this way. And then you should land here. Now you can run around this. You do need to run because you usually slip off not to get more distance. So you usually like roll here. But um you, if you want to drop down from the very beginning, and you can actually pick up another like soul here. It's a legendary soul, so it's a pretty big one actually. I think like 8k or 10k. You can actually do that too if you need some more. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to go to, I want to say there, like that island right there, where there's like the, the two items kind of closest together. And as you can see, I'm now kind of toggling my 
the my weapon back and forth. And you're gonna see once I get back in the swamp here. Like, look at my stamina bar once I'm doing that trick. Basically. So you can see that's regenning a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of stamina back. So that's why you do that. It just saves you a little bit of time here. If, if she comes back to you this way, I would recommend using Cloak. Pick up the cat ring. And do kind of go around her, because she, she can definitely still see you a little bit. You're going to be safe. She's not too bad to deal with. Actually, maybe I'll show a couple ways to get deal with her. Like, if she goes that way, I guess, yeah. I don't think I've shown too many alternatives so far in the run, so maybe it's good to do. Well, um, yeah, one of the run-ups, I guess, but the, the Lorna hasn't been that long, I guess. Okay, so if you respawn, she's definitely going to, like... Like, that, that's her spawn point, by the way, the cat ring. So, respawning there doesn't really help you get the cat ring. If you see better on G1, it reload before she gets there. Okay, so this is what I would recommend doing. If, if she sees you and you don't cloak in time, or she sees you after cloak, this is what I recommend doing. Like, circle around there, and then have enough stamina to do a running attack away from her if she decides to swing. Just don't give her your back straight up, because she will backstab you. Basically. So yeah, the, the running attack for the sword is pretty good for like a quick little dash of speed. So as you can see, sometimes I do it like coming off of land, because I'm gonna get slowed down by the swamp soon. So you can keep an eye on her. By the way, if you want to get a faster pickup for the Roy Lotus as opposed to that one, you can pick up this one. Oh wait, no, that's the wrong one. Pick this item. Ah, uh, that's the one the left. Oh, the right, rather, yeah. That's the uh, another Roy Lotus you can get. If you so wish. Would you like to have the foggy roll off of that little lip right there? And then go here to get the thief ring. Because you will need that. Like, you do have cloak, but you might need thief ring for a couple of situations. And I'll definitely explain why and how, how to use them. At least the way I use them. And, um... The speed run. Yeah, once you're here, you should more or less be out of the swamp. Like, they might, there's a little bit more here. That might be bad, but... If you do use cloak or something, you can pull out your... Your Crescent Falchion. If you don't know, it has some passive mana regen because that's a Crescent Infusion does in general. And then, uh, yeah, just go here. Um, yeah, so I was just gonna point out that my poison is probably gonna run out soon. My poison would normally run out, like, once I'm already inside the boss room, which is not a big deal, honestly. At least the way I do it. It's the way I do the fight. Uh, usually this, the, the poison tick is just enough to where, like, it runs out right before I die from poison. So it's hardly an issue. Just have regen ring on the entire time you run through here. And as long as you don't get hit by anything, as soon as you get the foggy for the third Colossus, you can take off the regen ring and put on Cleverat. And it should be safe to fight the fight. Um, but if you, do, if you do take a hit from something, if it's a small one, just heal with the Crescent Moon or something. Um... Or you're dead, depending on what it is. Hey, if it's the the Black Phantom, uh, you're probably dead. But anyway, um, so I just want to take off the region ring so I don't mess up my clever setup. And I just want to show that here, some people do cloak here, like a thief frame here. I actually wouldn't recommend it because the little depraved one in the back, the goblin, the one that has a poison cloud around him. He can be very wonky if he only notices you right in front of him. He can sometimes do that little tantrum attack that a lot of these goblins like to do. Which sucks ass, but... Um, if you don't have anything on that would disguise your presence, he will usually like notice you faster and he won't do that attack, so... Let's see if he... Okay, so he did notice me earlier, so I just need to make sure to roll whatever attack he does. And the likelihood of him doing the, um, the tantrum attack is very, very low. It can still happen, I believe, but very low once you, uh, don't have anything covering you. Alright, so what I like to do personally is go to the fog, and then I want to cast Cloak after I get to these boxes. So this one and this one. Because if this big one is following me and tries to hit me, he's going to 
stumble upon this box or maybe in the other one and break those before it hits me like it's gonna be far away enough so it hasn't been issue i haven't died to that guy yet by doing this stress. it's pretty cool and then now for the dangerous part of the village that i hate so much and the main reason i read a cloak into this run i usually should not have it this village so this goblin that goblin um i'll point them out a few more as i go through are very dangerous especially that tantrum attack i'm talking about uh, it's like a four hit like stun lock combo that it can do sometimes if you're really close like it just comes out immediately so it, there's very little you can do to wait i have a mask what the fuck i notice that um and if you saw my gdq run this specific one killed my run or not my run but like it killed me and it's definitely one of the worst run backs so i was really hoping that wouldn't happen and the shitty thing is that this is basically one of those like that's never happened before because this specific goblin has never killed me it's usually this one or like one a little bit later but usually what i do is now after gdq i've been running to the left of this little pole so he doesn't bother me and this one is shouldn't be an issue usually with cloak but yeah i usually region stamina around here um this might be a little off because of that this goblin might also be a little bit dangerous. That's another one that's fucked me over before. And I think that one could potentially be an issue, but I don't think so much with Cloak. Alright, right before we get to the last one, this this can also be a little bit of a bastard, but... All you have to do really is pull out your straight sword and do a running at one to him. And even if he starts his attack, like, even if you trade, he usually won't kill you as long as you, like, hit him too. Because you, like, stagger your both of each other. And you can go around. And because of Cloak, this one over here shouldn't even see you until it's too late. Yeah, so now you are pretty much ready uh, at the fog. So Cloak is showing out about here, as you saw there. Um, and what you need to do here is take off region and put a Cleverette. And I would recommend having homing soul arrow ready. And then your wand out, but two hand your Crescent Fashion first. Oh, that's a bad opener. Hold on, let me try again. I don't want to introduce this with this with this opener. So once you have all that, yeah. So that's the usual opener. So I usually strafe that to the left, then hit his middle part of the body, like the little wood he had. Ugh. Um, because that would actually defend him from like the first homing soul arrow you do. So. It's just good to get out of the way so you can get your full damage in right away. Oh, I haven't actually taken a good look at this boss yet. <laughs> anyway, but um... Yeah, so you want to do that. I, I like to take this off too sometimes because I think like I've seen that part of the wood also block me. But I think it might have been just been flies or something. Either way. Um, and then after that I like to... Okay, I got disoriented because of the, the pausing. But I actually like to break those thingies. Pull out my wand and do this one time. But that attack you just did is a little bit risky. Because the first one you did, the opener is like do 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 do. Like it's really fast, like a shotgun of the flies attack. But the one that's like doof, 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 the slower one, they last longer and they can actually swerve around. So they went that way. I think they might have crashed into the wall or something. But if they had not, they would have gone around and just hit me. So that attack is one to look out for. If you see that if it crashes into something, it's fine. But if it doesn't, it's gonna go back around. It could even go like to the air and come back around. It's really scary. Um, another thing to point out. Um, uh, so the hand, the other one has a wood kind of barrel covering it. If you break that, you're going to randomly get hit by flies from like his upper left or I guess his upper right, but your left. So like, I want to say a second or two after you break that, you're going to get flies attack. And Kazuto told me that it takes 17 seconds for another one to pop in. But if you break it with like your soul ray, just keep an eye on this hand. Make sure that you didn't break it. Cause if you do soul ray and then immediately go into homing soul arrow, soul ray again, he's going to hit you and kill you basically. So. Oh, okay. You can see the little fly balls right there. Like it, it, it's probably gonna hit the wall there, but it, uh, yeah, 
A little risky there. Uh, I usually like to be to his like leftish front or right behind him to avoid that attack whatsoever. The barrel attack. Usually that's the safest. That's why I kind of like circle around him in the beginning to straight and get behind him. So a little bit of RNG fight. But honestly, as long as you play it safe, it should be fine. Like you don't have to play it as, as scary as I did. Just try to get behind him, get homie solar sore in. Keep an eye for the flies attack. Try not to hit his little barrel hand. And it should be good. Honestly, it should be a good fight. Alright, so main is dry now. Um, this should be fairly simple. In theory. I did make a video on this if you want to see that too. The main is dry fight. But as far as like how to do it after a speedrun, I usually pop one old spice here. Because I, I usually that's just below what I need. So I just Archstone, and I usually pop two Crescent Moons, but if you have a Half Moon, you can pop one of those too. And then I usually shoot me and put me around three-fourths of my HP, or something, maybe a little bit. Actually, it should normally be a little lower. Let me... Um, even that's a little too high. Yeah, run there is usually what I have after this point. Because like I said, the, the poison should run out before it kills you, but it should be pretty low actually. It should leave you at like 80 HP or something, I believe. But anyway, so um, I found out that, or I realized that if you like roll and bump the wall in the back here and then roll at the bottom, you'll usually be able to iframe any fall damage, which is pretty neat. Uh, so if you're just like, if, you, if you're around eight, half already and don't want to use another Crescent Moon you're like to save time, just try to do that. You may still take some fall damage, unfortunately, but I found that it usually doesn't. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, if you do take some fall damage, I would recommend putting another Crescent Moon, basically, is to have around a half HP as you're done here. Uh, if you missed the Widow's Lotus early, this is the other one, the backup that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so yeah, so... Mana-wise, even if you're a little bit low, should be fine, but I would recommend pulling out, um... Straight Sword, and then make sure to have the Widow's Lotus equipped. I normally don't even have the Royal Lotus at all, the Noble Lotus. So for me, it's not a big is issue, but for you, it might. So just have that out. Make sure to be ready, full mana, and around half HP. And again, if you want to see how I do this in a slower format, check my video. But here's what we do. So script cutscene, obviously. Then we're gonna have the right, hug the right wall. You can usually regen stamina as this. This is easy, so you can have him go the way. I normally skip this cuts uh, dialogue. Roll here in between those four. Try to roll one more time. It might not happen all the time, but it should. Do running attack as you get off the land. Pop your widow's lotus here, and then do your bread and butter combo I was talking about earlier. The homie solero solray twice. Right here. And make sure to be. A decently far away from the wall. So around here is usually what I do. You can even get a little bit closer, but I'll normally do that if I'm just like still waiting for my widow's lo or my clever rat to set up. So yeah, use your widow's lotus whenever you have clever rat. That's what I should say rather. But yeah, if you do homing solar too close to the wall, some are gonna pop against the wall like this, and you're probably gonna die because you can actually fight back with a the wrath of God's explosion. As you can see there, with an optimal fight, this idiot is like super far away. <laughs> in the remake, I think they program it to be easier to mess with because of the trophy. Like there's the uh, May You Be Unharmed trophy, I believe it's called. And so they made him a little bit easier to, or made her a little easier to kill before he gets up to you. Because in the original Demon Souls, and actually in the 1.0 version, the speedrun of uh, Demon Souls, this is a lot tighter to do. Goro's like really aggressive in those, so even the combo that I just did may be really tight or maybe just killed me. Um, but yeah, so that's a pretty simple fight. And I did make a video on that recently, so if you want to see just a little bit of... Like, there's actually a, a better option to do this. Here, I guess I can show you. Um, maybe. Uh, I guess I can just uh, reload. I'll show you the general setup, like the idea behind the setup. But obviously I won't actually show you how it goes, I believe. Or, you know. So 
So, similar idea. Uh, you actually don't need the Widow's Lotus for this at all. Just make sure to have a big heal instead. So, full moon or something. But you will do something similar where you do this, then here. And you can do this with like full HP or almost, almost close to full, but you should stand around here and then start spamming homing soul arrow until it hits her. Kind of like that. You may need to use a uh, spice if you're low. And just like this, like if you're stand around this spot, uh, she won't do the homing or the, the, the wrath of gods at all. She'll actually just heal. But because of the healing, you're going to have to cast a couple to kill her more than the other one. Because like I think two homie soul arrows, maybe one soul is enough to kill her, but she's, just, she's regening, you're going to have to cast a lot of them. So it's safer for sure, it's a lot less stressful, and Garo will still be very slow, so... If you want to do that, uh, check my video out to see how it actually looks in the actual game. With the, with the, with the fight. Um, but even the other one is too... It's, it's a little bit simple. Like, the only thing that's a little bit risky is... Uh, just um, getting all the item inputs on. Like, popping the... The Widow's Lotus, and then immediately, like, casting this, and then immediately casting this, and then doing it again. Like, that can be a little tight on input-wise, so maybe try practicing on the Nexus instead. Alright, so, now you do need to pop the Rooted Soul and Writhing Soul. And then you need to touch the Archstone, and I would personally recommend you pop the Soul here, and then warp away to the Nexus one more time. 